it will be accessible also. All right. Future. Should I just type in the chat? Yeah, in the chat is fine. Thank you very much. Oh, cool, cool. All right. Thank okay, you. Guys. Thank you very much and bye bye. And now it's uh, thank you. Bye bye. It's time to to um, go over to our next speaker. Actually, uh, our next speaker. Zaim, I hello. hope I can. Hello, Zaim. Welcome to the uh, to our small conference. I hope I uh, I pronounce your name well. Perfect. Zaim Muzani yep, is your perfect. name. Unfortunately, we didn't have the opportunity to meet in person, but maybe in, in the future it will be possible. I just uh, had a look at your account, LinkedIn account, and one thing which really popped up in, uh, in my, through my reading, uh, he's saying he is passionate about building the next generation of leaders. And that's actually the real thing you are here about. We have, uh, we address in our um, New Way Org um, um, initiative, uh, teenagers and this exactly your target audience. And of course, there's a lot of other things in your life that are interesting and unfortunately I don't know, but I'm sure I will get to know them in the next 20 minutes. So feel free to introduce yourself and welcome to the session. Sure. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, is it? Uh, how do I address you, M Michelle? Michele. Yeah, Michelle Michel? is also fine. Michele. Michel? It's okay. Italian, Michel. actually. Perfect. Oh, uh, fantastic. Uh, and uh, thanks, thanks to Marcelo for for having me, inviting me. Um, I think just a, a quick introduction is that um, if you don't mind, of, of you know, I, I was told in the brief is that I have about fifteen minutes to to sort of. Yes, uh, that's about okay. the setting we have. Yes. Okay. Do you want to ask questions in between, or should I? That's up to you. It's your session. You, the stage is yours, depending okay. on your address. Uh, what some of, uh, of the participants here, we have also a live stream on, on Facebook and there, there might be questions coming from there and someone will just introduce it to you. So just feel free. Right. There is also a chat. Maybe you get a, a question over chat. But if you don't, if you just want to have the 15 minutes for yourself, we will all shut up. Up to you. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> I, I, I think feel free to jump in and ask questions. Uh, I, I sort of also I'll structure it in a, by sharing my story, my journey, and then the the last five minutes, which is ten to fifteen minutes, will just be about um, some uh, advice, uh, wisdom to share, and then the the last five minutes will be the Q and A. Or you know, if you just have a question, just jump in uh, and ask me. I'm, I'm happy to be interrupted. Course, yeah. Um, sure. So yeah, thanks thanks for having me, and I hope everyone's safe uh, and you know, um, and and you know, safe and certain from from the from the pandemic. Uh, so. The introduction about me is uh, maybe I'll start from the time when I was a child. So I'm I'm born in Malaysia, uh, born and bred in Malaysia. Um, uh, so you know, as as a, as, a, as a young child, I was very uh, introverted. So uh, I, I'm the youngest of three brothers, and I was, was always bullied as a as a as a as a youngest brother. I was bullied as a child, uh, and you know, when I was in uh, primary and secondary school, uh, like I didn't had a lot of achievements. I wasn't good at academics. wasn't good at sports. wasn't good at anything. Um, and didn't have many friends. Um, so I, I sort of, you know, you can, you can call me a loser, right? So like a, it's a definition of a loser uh, in school. Didn't have a girlfriend as well. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, growing up in, in this environment where I was quiet, didn't have many friends, I sort of wondered what would my life be? Um, because, you know, many of the people that are watching that me just 13 to 17 years old, uh, when I was your age, 13 to 17 years old, I didn't know how my life would turn out if I was uh, like this, right? Didn't have many friends and quiet. Uh, and I was very worried growing up, very worried about my future. And then I, I went to uh, college. Uh, and even in college, I tried to fit in, but I couldn't. Um, I, I had trouble fitting in with people because I, I just found myself quiet and different. Uh, and then I couldn't connect with people. Um, so I tried, to, I tried to do things that, you know, want, uh, made me look cool. So, I, you know, I was into hip hop, trying to dress differently, but, you know, didn't, 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 didn't seem to uh, gel well, you know, with who I am as a person. Uh, and it was tough. So, uh, throughout this period when I was in high school, college, university, I tried to fit in. Uh, and it was very difficult for me. Uh, it wasn't until um, I met someone that brought me into uh, volunteerism, uh, doing things in, in university campus uh, where... Uh, things started to change. So I got involved with the student council in university. And then from there on, I did a lot of projects. I did a lot of welfare projects, did a lot of uh, community projects with, with students, with you know, people, with, with the community. Uh, and from there on, when I started to engage with people outside of my circle, I started to realize that there was a shift in my behavior. I started to think differently. Uh, and, and because of this exposure in, in university, working with other people outside of my, my circle, I managed to join the council and I, I worked my way up 
So I was starting as a volunteer. I became the sort of the number two person in the student council. Uh, and then I, I became another, a student leader in, in a sense. And after I graduated from university, because of my, my extracurricular activities, I managed to work with um, the leaders of my country, the, the ministers, the cabinet ministers, the, the people that run the country uh, on, in the fellowship program for six months. Um, and, and that was a great experience. And after that, I joined a, a company that um, uh, helped me work with the community, a non-profit company that worked with the community. Uh, and when I was volunteering for, for the, when I, was, when I was working, I managed to uh, start my own NGOs. I started three NGOs. Uh, three non-profit, right? three organizations working with the community at the site. So while working full-time, I started three organizations working with young people. And my, my mission has always been, how do I help young people um, develop them the best version of themselves? Because as a kid, I didn't have the guidance. I didn't have anyone, I didn't have a mentor to help me go through the process. And I wanted to be the person to help young people uh, go through that process. Uh, and, and after three NGOs, uh, you know, I had many opportunities uh, after you know running a lot of a lot of things at the site. I was invited to be part of a government agency, a government organization, um, to look at uh, youth development. I was invited to chair the biggest uh, student movement in my country uh, called Isaac. It's a global movement, and you know this the, the experience that that started from university to to where I am uh, was was very it was something that I never imagined because growing up uh, in in school. I was not the person that I am today, right? I, I didn't have any friends. I wasn't confident. I couldn't speak in public, uh, and that changed. And you know, upon reflection, uh, about my, my my short journey, I'm only thirty years old. But looking back, you know, you know, at my my younger days, there was a there was a few things that I thought I could have done differently, right? So there were four things that I think I could have I could have done more. The first thing is I wish I had explored the world, and not just exploring in terms of visiting countries, but explore the world in terms of meeting people from different backgrounds. When I was younger, when I was 13 to 17, I wish I had uh, met with people from different backgrounds. I wish I had, uh, I wish I had, uh, you know, gone out of my circle to meet people. Uh, secondly, I wish I had found mentors. I wish I had uh, made an effort to find people that could mentor me, that could uh, guide me. So I'm not talking about mentor that is old, someone that is just maybe two to three years older than me to help me make sense of the world around me, right? Um, the third thing, I wish I had been more involved in my community. I wish I had done something when I was younger. Because studying something when I was 21, it's not the same as studying something when I was a teenager, you know? So I always think uh, if I had started later or uh, earlier, I think I would have done, achieved a lot more now than I have before. Um, and the fourth thing is, I wish, it was, I wish I knew that it was okay to be different, to be introverted. Uh, because around me, my, my circle of friends were, you know, people that allowed extrovert. And I wish I was like them, but you know what? It is okay to be introvert. It's okay to be quiet and shy, right? Um, I never knew that when I was growing up as a teenager. Um, there were those are the four things I wish I had done more. But I want to leave sort of this three R, the, sort of this wisdom is the, the three R, and I think it's important, right? The, the first R is read. Uh, and I think this is some important. Point. So reading is, is, is key, and, and preferably non fiction books. Fiction is great, but non fiction. I'm talking about self-help, leadership, history, biography, science, politics, reading things that make you expand your horizon, that make challenge your thinking and make you think differently. I think that's important, right? So I think reading is something that's overrated because if you notice a lot of stuff that we read are articles, it's not good. I think it's more to read books, like real books, right? Thick books that can help you articulate and develop your thought process, right? It become makes you more critical minded. The second R is roaming around. Or traveling, right? So second is roaming around, and I think this is what I mean earlier when I talk about exploring the world. So imagine if you're uh, 13 years old in school or 17, you could explore your state, you could explore in your state within where you live, your province, your state, your area. You could go to the museum, library. Uh, you can go to places of interest. They could be interesting, uh, you know, and and explore what's what's in your vicinity, what's in your neighborhood, what's interesting, and if you have a chance, maybe interstate go out of the state, different province, learn about the, you know, the different people in different states in the country. Imagine America, 50 states, right? Imagine go out of 50 states. Uh, my country only has 15 states, uh, 15, one, five. So, I, you know, you could probably go to different states and learn about different cultures of people. Uh, and, 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 and you can, and, you know, once you're done interstate, you can go overseas, right? international, uh, and, and look at other cultures. So, you know, in Asia, in Southeast Asia, so there's Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia. Uh, so, in, so traveling, there's three things, right? Travel within state, interstate, and international. So sort of, you know, 
it, it sort of you, if you think of traveling, you can, you can go to sort of these three different paradigms, right? And and when you travel, you get to meet and connect with people, ask questions, get curious, right? So that's the second R. Second R is roam around. The third R is reflect. And I think something reflecting is something that is not done enough. Um, and 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 reflection just means that you make time to be with yourself. Maybe an hour on a weekend, Saturday or Sunday, and just think about life. Think about the past, the, fu- the present, and the future. Um, and and it's important because you cannot make sense of the future if you don't know your past. But you also cannot plan for the future if you don't live in the moment. And I think it's something that pe- uh, I think is not always mentioned, right? Uh, so you know the, that's what the three are. The three are: you read, so read non-fiction books. Learn about, uh, learn about you know things around you, something different, challenge your thinking. Second, roam around, travel within your state, interstate, international. Third, reflect, and make you know make time for yourself and think about the think about life. Uh, and, and I want to end with sort of a, a a small question, right? So it sounds easy, right? Three R, but I think how do you start? And I think you know starting is always difficult because if you think of starting a goal, it's always a big thing in mind. But if you just think of a big goal. And, 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 and breaking it down to small pieces, it'll be manageable. So there is a quote that I live by, which is, how do you eat a whale? Whale, right? Big fish, whale. One bite at a time. You eat a whale one bite at a time. In other words, you take one step at a time. Uh, so I'll give you an example. I wanted to read a 500-page book. 500-page book, right? Ridiculously thick book about principles. And you know what I did? I, I told myself I will only read four pages a day. Four pages a day. And I finished that book within two months. So essentially, you're just breaking down big things into small chunks. So it's manageable. So when you talk about reading, uh, roaming around, and reflecting, you're doing those big things, but you're breaking it down into something that you can manage. Uh, and that's uh, my wisdom. Hopefully, that uh, was interesting enough. Thank you very much too, for your presentation. Actually, I was wondering, you know, you said uh, what you would wish to have when you were a teenager in order to, to accomplish more. So I think if you would have all the things you, 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 you would wish to have, then where would you be? You, you would be on Mars. You know, you did such, you, you started by saying, I was an introvert, I was bullied in that school. And now look where you are. You made an incredible career. You did a lot of things. So... <laughs> I think it's good that someone stopped you. You would be on the moon now, you know what I mean? So I actually, maybe I would say, yeah, the best career is starting at the best, the best, um, of course, I'm ironic by saying, you know, the best, the best way to become a good leader is just be aware that, uh, that, uh, that you don't accept the way you are and you will change. So you had a, a very big motivation to, to make all these steps toward the, the person you are now. And to say that these changes came from a, a really a wrong, a very strong power inside you have. So how could you generate? And I think you gave you gave the model of the three R's, and I think it's something that may be relevant. So among these three R's, which one is is uh, is there any other equal, or can you just go into it? Is there any something for you? It's more important, more relevant, or do you think the three R's are just the same, the same level? I, I, so I think the three R's equally important, right? But I think if you're if you're a teenager. Um, so if I, put, if I put myself in the in shoes of a 13-year-old uh, teenager, I think roaming around is not easy. You need money and you probably need your parents' permission to travel around, right? Uh, it's not, not always safe, not always easy, not always feasible. Um, so either reading or reflecting is important, right? So I think reading as a child is important. If you, if you read successful people in this world, one thing they have in common is they read, and they read a lot. Uh, and they read a lot of things on topics that are not relevant to their field. Uh, and I, I always find that this, this is not a secret. I think this is just a habit of someone who uh, is a leader. I think just read, read whatever you can. But I think it's important is that you are what you read. So if you read, you know, junk stuff, right? You, you, right. you probably won't, you probably won't be able to develop strong intellectual leadership. So I think you, you need to read stuff that is in, you know, substantive. Uh, and, and reflection is easy. I think reflection is, you know, shutting the world out and thinking for yourself. Because that, that the, the, the one hour of reflection a week is important for you to understand what 
you know, like what were the mistakes I did? What were the good things that I did? And, you know, how can I use this for the next week or the next month or the next year? So I think as a teenager, I think if you can you read and reflect, and then when you have the, when you have the resources and the permission from your parents, then you can maybe roam around, right? Um, so yeah, I'll start with reading and reflecting. And then when I have the resources, I, I roam around. Let's ask the teenagers, what do you think, Tansuli or Sonia, and which, which, which of these three R's would be for you the most challenging one or the most important one for if you, if you think, yeah, I want to become a leader in the next, or a big leader. So, and now you got the advice uh, by saying, yeah, three R's may be a model which is easy to understand and really uh, maybe not so easy to achieve, but still a good, a good model for it. Tansuli or, or Sanyan, which of these three are for you more? What do you think? Which, which one is just jump on your face? Yeah, this is the thing I would prefer, or there I'm a bit scared of it. What do you think? Tansuli or Sanyan? I guess they are reflecting. <laughs> So we got the point. Reflection is the most important part of it, for or the most challenging, or whatever. Okay. Um, I think personally, for me, reflecting, I'm not so sure how. Ref I'm personally, when like school asks me to reflect after these activities or what, what so, um, I'm not so sure how reflecting would help. But. <laughs> Um, so I think that would be the most challenging because I'm not so sure what we're trying to achieve when reflecting. Interesting, yeah. interesting point. Interesting point. Uh, uh, you know, if I can comment, um, I think that's an interesting point. I was like you, right? So I think so when you reflect, right? Imagine, imagine if you were not. Uh, imagine if you're in a, by yourself, right? One hour by yourself, and you're not, you're not looking at social media, you're not talking to anyone. And if if you if you think about the past month, right? You were in school, family, friends, and you think about what was interesting, what was something that I learned last month, uh, you know? And if you can, if you can think about something that was interesting, I think that's enough for you to reflect. Because you don't need to reflect in terms of finding your life purpose. I think that's impossible. You cannot reflect in terms of finding your life purpose in a single hour. But I think if you think about what was interesting that happened to me in the one, past one month, or what or it could be what was one mistake that I did? What was the mistake that I did in the past one month? Right? What was the, something that I thought, oh my God, I should have not done that. Right? Big mistake. Uh, it's enough. But, and if you do it enough times, what happens is you're able to use that for the future. So when you, when you go in a journey, right, whether it's school, whether it's outside, you're able to use these reflections as a way for you to maneuver life, to, to go about life. Uh, and, and the reason I'm saying this is because if you don't reflect, you don't know where you're going. You don't know what were the things that was interesting or what were the, things, what were the mistakes that you made. So if you use this as a point of just thinking about what was interesting about the past and how can you use it for the future, it could be beneficial. But don't stress about you know, finding purpose, finding the life direction. I think that's impossible. If you just have to find the small things, what was the mistakes? What was interesting? Who did I meet that was very interesting? And that's enough. So it's enough for you to move the next month, next week with those reflections and improving as a person. I think you make a very important point. And the fact is actually, if you talk about this teenager, too, they all already reflect. Sometimes they are, or they are not so aware of really like reflecting. And the point you mentioned actually in your statement is like that by saying, yeah, you have to be aware. You have to think about, yeah, I'm thinking of it. And then I take a decision out of it. So being aware of that they are reflecting is already like the thing which really may point out. And I think Sun Yen, you are reflecting a lot about things. That's what I, how I, I perceive you. I know you since a while now here, but uh, I think just being aware that, yeah, now I think of it and I take, uh, I take a move and I take a direction and I'm aware that I'm thinking of a, sp a specific topic. So reflection you do, but being aware of it, like this metacognitive um, approach of it is really like very important for, and I think I, I totally agree with you, uh, Zayn, that this is crucial for, for, for developing 
the way or becoming the way you, you really became as well. Any other question? I think Tansuli, you, you, you were really ref reflecting without saying anything. You, what do you think of these three hours? Is there something you, you, you're planning to, or for you as a challenge or something you would like to do? I think one thing about reflecting is that if I was given an hour without electronics or anything, um, nowadays, instead of reflecting, normal people would just like sleep. So like, it really takes like, um, it really takes someone that's dedicated to reflect nowadays. So yeah. So maybe I will be dedicated and reflect too. Um, Thank you very much. I, I, have, I have a comment on reflection. Uh, being an Asian and living in Asian country and uh, uh, surrounded by Asian community, I think uh, we generally take the word reflection and associate it with what went wrong. So we only look for the negative stuff. And it's tough to last like an hour looking for what went wrong. We, we always, almost always forget to uh, see also what went right and what could have gone more right, right? I mean, if we try to look at things from the more positive, I think it, it will fuel us to, to go more and more deeper and deeper on the reflection. Because I think the directions that the, the kids get in school when they go into retrospective or, or, or feedback session is like, what went wrong and how can we make it right? right. But we forget to also look at what was right to begin with and what should we continue doing? Sure. So I think it's tough because of that, that aspect as well. For sure. I, I just want to add one last uh, comment, if, if I can. Sure, sure. I, go ahead. I, sure. I, I, and I think like, uh, uh, Tansuli, I think you, you were completely right. Uh, and I, I think uh, you know, the last thing I mentioned um, before the q &A was that if you take one step at a time, uh, so I'm not saying one hour is something you have to do every week. I'm just saying that uh, an example, right? So you can just spend one minute or five. So, the, so you just spend one to five minutes, every, you know, once a month maybe, is enough. Or maybe, you know, if, if five minutes a, a week is enough. Uh, and maybe if you want, you can write it down. So, so you, I, I don't want people to spend one hour a, a weekend, right? I mean, there's an example, right? So maybe if you start for five minutes, uh, for you know, five minutes a weekend for the next five months, maybe by the end, by the end, you probably do it for one hour. But for now, just do it five minutes. So one, one step at a time, don't, don't, it's not about taking big goals and achieving it and, and going in. I think it's just taking big goals and breaking it down and just doing it the level that you can. So if you think five minutes is enough, five minutes is enough. Even one minute is enough. And then go and do something else that makes you interested. Like it makes you, you know, go room happy. around, as you said, you know, you have 23 hours and 58 minutes to room around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your presentation time. Thank time, you. is, time is up. Uh, you are free to, to, to remain here for, for the next speaker. You are free to ask questions as well. And um, uh, thank you for also giving maybe your contacts for the teenagers. If there is something, uh, they, may, they may come uh, with questions. Uh, they will come up later. Uh, we have your LinkedIn account. I think they can join you there. If you have something, some other important or relevant link, they can um, address you personally over email or whatever. Feel free to, to write your email address in the chat. We will publish it. Um, uh, also when we have the, um, the, the video uploaded in, in our channel. Thank you very much and um, hope to see you soon in person. Uh, 